Hello everybody and welcome back to Melbury Estate. Today we're going to be doing the start of something which has been highly requested. We're going to be doing some cultivating and also some planting of sugar beet because it was very highly requested when I asked uh, what everyone wants me to do next and it was to do sugar beeting so I'm deciding now that we're going to do sugar beeting uh, probably in the next couple of videos but first of all I would like to do another field uh, so that we can harvest that alongside another field which we already own. We do already own quite a big field of sugar beet and off the top of my head I can't actually remember which one it is so we better just check. Um, sugar beet is number six I think yeah that looks like sugar beet to me I always get barley and sugar beet mixed up with the colours but yeah that looks good enough and I think it's grown I'm not sure if it's grown hang on uh, yes it has it's ready to be harvested so we can remove the tops of that but I also want to buy field number 20 and we'll cultivate that first. It's been ploughed but it hasn't been cultivated and uh, then we'll put some sugar beet into there as well. So I think it's another job for the 6910 or 6910 however you want me to pronounce it. So I've just been browsing through the mod sites and I came across this mod just here which is a Coon Power Harrow which would go quite well on a field which has been ploughed and also the Coon Citera 3000 which can plant sugar beet. Now obviously it is a power harrow as well, but I think from, from ploughed land to going straight on to with this, I don't know, you might do it, but I was just going to do a bit more uh, soil work and break it down a little bit more with this power harrow first. You might say I'm wasting my time, but I don't know, I just, I just want to feel comfortable going straight into the, the furrows from the plough. Um, obviously, I don't know if I'm doing it right or not, but I think... I think this is probably one of the right things to do at least. Uh, we will attach the Power Harrow PTO when we get to the field. I don't want to damage it on the road or anything, so we'll just head over there now. We do need to buy it. And it's quite wide. It probably should be on the back of a trailer, um, just because of the width of it. Not ideal, but it's not impossible. Uh, shame we don't have a flashing light with this tractor. That would be good. Uh, working mirrors, I don't know if they do work. But other than that, everything in this tractor is fantastic. The detail is just immense. It's really good. Anyway, let's head down there now and we'll buy the field. I don't know if it's going to be very expensive. I did look at a price for field 38, which is that really big one behind us. And that wasn't too expensive for the size. So I'm, I'm hoping that field 20 will be quite cheap. The fields don't seem too expensive on this map. I was hoping to go over the other side of the farm where I haven't been yet, but then most of the fields over there are either grass fields, they've either got something in them, which isn't sugar beet, or they are just too big. Because I'm trying to use the smaller equipment at the moment, and it would take a very long time with this stuff to get those fields ploughed and cultivated and drilled and everything. So I was just trying to stick to the smaller ones, and most of the smaller fields are around the farm. Um, so it's just the way it's worked out really but I think when we do get some bigger equipment we will move away and we will do some of the bigger fields uh, having said that though like I say most of the big fields are grass fields but there are some which are arable uh, so we we'll just have to to work through it all when we get some big stuff we'll be able to go to the bigger fields uh, mustn't miss my turning it's somewhere around here yeah here it is coming up on the right not too far away um, but yeah, if I can find some kind of trailer for this it'd be good. Here is field number 6, our other sugar beet field. It's quite big. For a sugar beet field it is pretty big. I'm hoping to get, I think it's the Roper sugar beet harvester mod, I think it is. I was looking at it the other day and it looked really good. So I might get that instead of using the usual equipment but we'll see now I could have gone through the yard to get to here it's just it's a bit easier this way we're not having to slalom around through all the sheds uh, but it is the field you can see just a, just beyond field 16 here of course if you're familiar with this map you will know that already and I am hoping to move on to another map as well not finishing Melbourne Estate we're going to continue with Melbourne Estate but I'm looking for the next map, hopefully getting one lined up very soon. 
we will park our tractor just here and run over to the buy icon there. So I'm sure you can appreciate it's probably the right size equipment for this field. Because I really don't want to get the job done in about three minutes. That would be boring. £47,700. Pretty good. Which still leaves us with a bit of money. So back into our tractor. We will have to attach the PTO. You've got to love that manual attach mod. There's the PTO on. Actually, looking at this, we may be going the wrong way across here. Because it's been ploughed in the opposite direction. I think you go with the furrows, from what I remember. From what everyone's told me before. I will have to do that. Of course, that will mean it takes longer, because we're, it's um, easier to go the longer way. It's, it's wider that way than it is that way. So it's more turning round. But I think when we've done a bit of it, we'll get it onto a worker, so I can go and get another tractor and go and get the drill and we'll start to get it planted with sugar beet there is field number 17 which has been harvested already that's obviously a neighbouring farm I did say before that we might be able to do some baling there but obviously we do need to buy it first uh, I didn't realise that we didn't own it but yeah let's start to go across the field rather than up and down the field Quite a nice mod though this, seems to work quite well. And there are some power harrows where you can actually put another seed drill on the back. Uh, like I say, I might be doing this wrong, I might be power harrowing it twice, in fact I am power harrowing it twice, it's just I didn't think that the seed drill would break it down enough from being a ploughed field to having a decent seed bed. Uh, but there you go, that's just the way I'm going to do it today. It's not a big field and it does need a bit of work and it's a very good tractor for this job I think it seems to be doing a very good job no power problems there is another version of this mod which we've actually got it comes in the same pack and this is the one which has the compatibility for a front loader. The other one I think has the front hitch. Um, I went for this one because the front loader is handy. Although having a front hitch as well would also be very handy. So we could buy both when we can afford both. Okay, so that seems to be getting on really well now. We're going to have to go and get the seed drill. Get ready for that. Um, I like this uh, the dirt that's now starting to appear on this tractor. It's washable. Um, I think probably the best tractor to use is the T7, which we had trouble using when we were doing our baling. The T7 is here with the Matthew Ferguson baler. Uh, we'll probably just park this up properly now. I just sort of dumped it in there before. Uh, best place to put it, uh, probably where we got it from really, although it could go in there, maybe in there. Yep, 
I think that's a good place for it. Now we do have this pottinger just here, and I think that the coon is possibly a reskin of it. I couldn't say for sure though, uh, but it's just something different. So we'll head down to the shop and we'll pick that up as well. I think we should have no problem powering it with the T7. It's not a huge drill anyway. The John Deere could pull it easily, so this will have no problem. You notice I left the bale trailer just in there ready for next time. We'll do some more bale moving. Here is our coon. Not a bad looking thing really. Actually looking at it, I don't know. It might not be a reskin or maybe it is. I don't know. I can't decide. It's amazing how just a different texture will make it look different. Let's just... Uh, creep forwards a bit there and we'll attach it but I didn't want the PTO attached I'll we'll take that off I suppose the thing about these C drills is all the weight is on the back axle so it can make it quite light on the front axle whereas the much larger trail drills are putting the weight on their own wheels but I don't think this tractor it does need a front weight. It does seem to be quite a big tractor for the seed drill, I suppose. It is quite big. It's more than enough power for it anyway. So all we need to do now is head back down to the farm, get some seed, and we'll begin to do some planting. Now that we've got a nice seed bed, Also set the crop type as sugar beet before I forget. And then I start drilling wheat. Okay, so let's get some seed in here. Probably would have been easier just to pick that up. But I want to try some different things here. Let's fill it up. I think we'll do a full load. And we may as well go the back way. It does take a shortcut. I wonder how the other tractor's getting on. It should be okay. Unless it's crashed. Which it could have done. As it's not on course play, it wouldn't actually tell me if it had crashed. The good thing though is most of the hedges on this map don't have collisions. So you don't have to worry as much about things crashing and getting stuck. No, it's still going. Good, that's good news. The only reason I've gone around the headland is so that it doesn't have to keep going through the hedge. If it was just me doing it, I wouldn't do that. I'll do the headland last. But yeah, it's done, it's done quite a good job. Not bad. We will attach the PTO. There we go. And that is a much better seed bed to be going into. Yeah, I am glad that I did use the power harrow first. Definitely. It's done a much better job. You just can't imagine it turning it into that from a ploughed field. Because that is so fine and broken up and worked in. And uh, yeah, that is so much better. Yep. So pleased I did that. Yeah, the downside is it's such a small seed drill. 
but not to worry about that. It is nice to use some smaller stuff though. That is why I went for a smaller field instead of having a, a bigger, bigger drill with a big field. So yeah, sugar beet it's going to be, which means the sugar beet harvester is going to be expensive, we'll probably rent it. A lot of you always ask me which renting mod is the best, and I don't know if there is a best one. There's some which you can do where you can only rent stuff for a day, or actually you can choose how long you want it for, which is probably good, that is probably better, because then obviously if you don't need it for the amount of time that you chose, you can go and a refund or you'd have to spend much in the first place. Um, some of them, the one I use, the minimum amount of time you can have it for a machine is a day, which usually is fine. But if you only wanted to move some bales or something with a loader, then that probably wouldn't take a day. So I don't know. Um, I would say they're all good, but just have a look around and get the one that suits you. Just notice that all the tractors which I've got, nearly all the tractors which I've got, support a front loader. I've done it accidentally but they all have an attachment for a front loader so there should be no shortage of tractors needed to move bales or anything but we have got the JCB loader now as well so we have got more than enough front loaders going well. That tractor is still going as well. Uh, if we can just keep one tractor on a worker at a time then that would be the most cost effective. If I'm not going to be in this one I'll obviously be in that one. Probably keep swapping between the two. Although that one hasn't got too much further to go. The Real Terrain mod though is really good. If you haven't got it, I recommend downloading it. The download link is below. Uh, it basically just adds a lot more realism to the way the tractor moves, the physics really, uh, by OEB modding. It was in the mod contest. Very good mod. I think we'll just keep going until we get further down the field. Well, sometime later, and we're still going, but we are progressing nicely. It's a shame the tractor's driving through the hedge, but pretty much finished now with the power harrow. It's already starting to grow, which is a bit unfortunate. I didn't think it would do really, because we're only on times five, and also we're on normal, so surprised that it's doing that. But this power harrow is now finished with, so we'll take it back to the yard. I'm hoping the sound is actually okay because I did notice that this tractor is much quieter than the New Holland, so I'm hoping it's not too quiet. Just need to find a place for it. I seem to be bringing all the machinery to the same yard. I'm thinking about it. The New Holland is probably going to need some more seeding. Not filled it up yet and it's been going for quite a long time. Ooh, and this, this shed here should be okay. Don't want to keep cluttering up that area through there. And it can stay on it. So we'll just lower it down. Turn the engine off and that is the job done with that one. So now we need to head back over to the New Holland, which you can see just over there. Good view distance. Right, uh, 25%. That probably will last until the end. It's still not being filled up. We'll turn the worker off and we'll continue ourselves. I'll keep going, save a bit of money. I 
I never think it looks good if it starts to grow before you finish planting the field. Probably should have set it to slow and then speed it up to normal once I had done it. Hey, there's our bales over there, all fallen down and looking really bad. But yeah, both these mods do seem to be fairly good and they, they both work well. So I'm impressed with that. I will share the link below as always. Oh, we're not going to make it. Almost empty. So we'll now go and fill it up, but not with much. We hardly need any, probably about 10% just so we can guarantee we've got enough to finish the field. I can't believe how close that was. Wow, that filled up quicker than expected. That should be enough though, 14%. head back to the field and just finish it off and then we can let it grow and of course very soon we'll be able to use our new sugar beet harvest which we're probably going to get and do some harvesting Just got to clean up this corner and then we're done. Well, there we go. So what we'll do is we'll take it back to the yard. We'll put it next to the power harrow, the John Deere. And that should be it for today. Next time, I don't know what we'll be doing because obviously we have to wait for that to now grow. We could start a harvest in our other big field, but that is so big, I just worry that's going to drag on for many weeks before we actually finish it. So I don't know. If I do that field, I'm probably going to have like four harvesters or something, three harvesters. Nothing stupid actually, not, not four. Uh, but enough to get the job done relatively quickly and not drag it on for weeks on end. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, next time... I guess you can choose again. We might do some animal work. Um, yeah, we might do. Possibly. We will see. So we'll put it in here. We'll lower it down. And there we go. Job done. Both done. And the field has taken quite a bit longer than I thought it would do. But definitely worth it. There's the field just over there. So thanks for watching and as usual, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.